How's everybody doing? It's Paul from Magpie247. Uh, I hope everybody is okay uh, and has been safe. I know a lot of Geordies have been travelling down to the capital today uh, and conditions have been far from fucking ideal. Uh, I know I'm in uh, Yorkshire at the moment and uh, yeah, it's a very wintry Yorkshire. So yeah, not great. So safe journeys back to all of those Newcastle United supporters who, you know, again, again, against the odds, early kickoff. On a Saturday, weather conditions absolutely horrendous. Still made the trip down there, sell out three thousand in the away end, and uh, yeah, not served up the best fare. It, it's it's I think it's uh, is the best way of summing that particular game up. I thought first half, um, you know, starting with the team news. The team news I was quite pleased with. Dubravka back, major plus, and he pulled off some absolutely fucking hellish saves today. He really did. Uh, it could it could and maybe should have been a lot more than just the two in the end to be honest. But Debravka back, um, Clark dropped, very attacking at the full backs, and this is it is an area of concern because we're putting wingers in at um, we're putting wingers in at full back because needs must, and we've not got the options uh, in Eddie House views. It has to be something that we're looking at uh, resolving in January because it's it's it is slightly farcical. We should have specialists in the position, but we don't. Today, Ryan Fraser, he uh, was in at right wing back, Matt Ritchie on the left. Um, and like I said, Clark was dropped, Shea kept his place. He was a slight doubt before the game uh, had started. Um, besides um, Jamal Lascelles and also Emil Kraft. The, the defence, again, really not showering themselves in, in a great deal uh, of kudos from any Newcastle United supporter and it is our Achilles heel you know we've scored more goals than fucking Arsenal but we continue to ship goals week in week out and in a, in a strange sort of way uh, the, the suspensions that are now going to be forced upon us might actually do, do us and give us a blessing in disguise but first half I thought we frustrated um, you know I, I thought we did a good job of frustrating them and um, of, of blocking them, not giving them much space. Um, you know, I thought we were decent first half. And, you know, if it wasn't for a great save from the Arsenal keeper, tipping it onto the bar, John Joe Shelby may have scored. I thought he was one of our better players yet again uh, for Newcastle uh, today. Obviously following up a really good performance last time out against Brentford. Uh, unlucky not to score, but we're going at, at half-time nils apiece. And you knew that they would up the game because they were quite slow and lethargic and you were worried uh, how it would go in the second half and there was no surprise when they opened the scoring uh, a good goal but you knew at that point it would it would take a minor miracle uh, the referee I will just touch upon now fuck me uh, I thought he was shit I mean there's there's referees who are more leaning towards the home side but we got fuck all of that well absolutely all uh, you know all game there was penalties in there I thought for us, but we got absolutely nothing, and it's it follows on from being shafted. It feels like time after time after time again, some sort of agenda from these referees to make sure that Newcastle are down, Newcastle struggle, etc. Um, but yeah, to be honest, a Newcastle player could have sneezed, and he probably would have had a yellow card, a red card, or considered a penalty. But look, I've no complaints with with the scoreline. I think Arsenal two nil. Uh, is probably a fair re reflection on how the game went. The second goal by the substitute, Martinelli, who came on, uh, what, within a couple of minutes, he'd, he'd notched, he'd scored. Uh, but Newcastle didn't really do much um, about it. We didn't ruffle out any feathers. Uh, I thought St Maximum had a, a poor display, but look, we didn't have much of the ball, did we? You've got to have plenty of the ball to see the best of the likes of St Maximum. Almiron came on didn't do a great deal um, I thought Jacob Murphy when he come on looked decent put in some crosses there was the odd little flicker there but even when we had those odd little chances I was never convinced that we'd score and get back into the fucking game and I don't think the players particularly felt that too and yes it's a difficult game uh, but look in the situation we're at at the moment every game we've got to go into to try and you know try and, uh, and win it try and ruffle some feathers try different stuff and second half, not so much the first half, but the second half, I just felt it had a little bit of deja vu about it and there was a predictability to it and the defence creaked once again. And I touched on it before, 
we, we're going to be missing Lascelles, missing Richie for the next game. Picked up the fifth yellow card of the season. They will miss the next game against Norwich. So we're forced into a reshuffle. So uh, hopefully Fernandez comes in and not Clark. My worry is Clark was on the bench. Fernandez nowhere to be seen again. So the likelihood is is that Clark will probably come back into the uh, into the defence. But um, I don't know what Fernandez has done. I've heard a few things. People saying, "Well, he's a bad trainer," or this, that, and the other. My response to that would be, "Nah, you need you need to." Um, <laughs> Nah, I I just can't I can't take that he's a he's a he's a bad trainer or a bad attitude or anything. He's been here, he's been a model professional, no uh, qualms about it whatsoever. Then all of a sudden, he's a bad trainer, he's a bad attitude, this that and the other. I've never heard that before until literally over the past week or so. So I just I just cannot I cannot accept that Fernandez is a bad uh, you know a bad trainer. Hopefully, with limited options. And depleted options. Um, Eddie Howe looks at maybe going to a four at the back because we've got to attack these games, and there's no doubt about it. Um, I saw Kyle put a, a post out saying we need at least one win. I've seen others put out similar saying, yeah, we need at least a win of the next two matches. For me, I think we need we need both. We've got six points on the board at the moment. If we get another six from the next two games, that's twelve points. Um, results need to go for us. But if we can get 12 points and then maybe go to a, a Leicester somewhere and get something else, an unexpected point, a, a victory somewhere like we did last season against Leicester, um, then that could make all the difference. But there's no doubt about it. Newcastle have to start scoring goals. We have to start causing more problems. We need to be able to stay in touch until we get to the beginning of January. And at the beginning of January, there can be no uh, differing. There can be no hesitation. There can be no nothing. We need to go out there, strike where the iron's hot, and bring in some decent quality. I don't care whether they're free transfers. I don't care whether they are uh, loans. I don't care whether they're permanent transfers. I really don't give a shit. All I am fearful about is our Premier League survival and Premier League safety uh, and starting this new regime and not from the Championship. Don't want to be dipping down into the Championship. I really cannot be asked with trips away um, <laughs> around the Championship. No disrespect to the Championship. There's some fantastic places there. I've had some great memories of doing it before, but fuck me. We well, need to stay up. Uh, but these lads now need to realise that the onus is on them. They've got to do it. The second half wasn't good enough. Uh, misplaced passes, things just not falling, um, not good enough. The, it's got to be 100% better when it comes to these next two home games. We've got to attack. I'd like maybe to try to see if we could go to four at the back. Jamal Lewis, he was on the bench today. He's going to most likely come in on, on the, on the left-hand side of the defence. Um, and again, we need to go for it. We need to go for it, no doubt about it. Um, but I'm gutted. I am absolutely gutted. Sick as a dog. I'll be watching, uh, obviously, results now. And when I get back in, I plan to watch the uh, the Brighton Leeds game. I'm fucking glutton for punishment, man. Fucking glutton for punishment. Hopefully, Leeds don't get anything out of that game because we've got to keep that that cap down to as manageable as is possible. Because at the moment, you look round and you scrape your hair, scratching your head, and you're thinking. Who are going to be the three sides to go down if we're not to go down? And it's a huge worry. Look, let's just get six points in the next two games and I'm sure that the world will seem a much, much brighter place. Um, Eddie Howe's always told it's a difficult uh, situation, difficult job. Um, and he'll have had that confirmed to him today from the touchline. Uh, he did do substitutions, he did try and change things, but it just didn't work. The first half, I thought we did a reasonable job. I thought we went in and we did, I had a pretty professional first half. We frustrated, we time wasted. Uh, we took every opportunity to try and get at least a point out of the game. But alas, Arsenal deserve it 2-0 winners. And you sometimes you've just got to say, look, they deserved it. They deserved the 2-0 uh, victory. And uh, yeah, leaves us rooted to the foot of the Premier League table. Um, yeah, so I'm just running around now. I've got a few things to do before getting back for this Brighton game. But yeah, uh, I was full of probably blind optimism before the game started. I thought we could get something out of it, maybe a draw. At half-time, I thought, yeah, maybe we can get a nil-nil. But we just don't keep clean sheets, do we? So I hope, like I say, St James's Park, it, I hope it's rocking. Uh, Eddie Howe's first game, uh, home game at St James's Park. Um, 
And if the defence is so shit, let's just go attack. Let's just try and outscore some fuckers. Put a four or five goals and hopefully that's enough to be able to see us to three points. If we can get this first three points, it might just take the pressure off and take the hoodoo off. And then players might start playing a bit more naturally. Um, you know, you never know. Uh, Miggy might be able to come in. They might make some changes because we've got what, three games in a week. So you might see the likes of Miggy uh, involved. You might... Because I, I, I don't see how the likes of ASM and stuff play three games in a week. There was no gale today, but we could do with maybe rotating um, who's playing up top because Callum Wilson, three games in a week with his injury record uh, and muscle strains and muscle injuries is again asking a lot. And we can't risk losing Callum Wilson for any period of time at the moment. Uh, another position that desperately needs uh, filling is a reserve striker to be able to help Callum Wilson up top. Let me know what you think we're going to go with over the next two games. Are you confident still about staying up? Uh, how do you feel about today? Did it go pretty much as you would have uh, expected an Arsenal victory? Uh, positives from today. John Joe Shelby. We were impressed still by John Joe Shelby. Uh, Joe Linton put himself about and he was certainly working hard, wasn't he? But didn't have the same impact that he had last time out, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think about today going forward. Can we still stay up? Can we still stay in touch um, with that? You know, the, the the rest of the pack just above us. Can we still stay in touch? Let me know what you think. Take care. Keep it tuned. And I'll speak to you later.